um, the, the questions about the in, in my country in Indonesia uh, uh, what is Indonesia as an identity is already like a race since long time ago like before the independence and then going on until now but <coughs> for me the artist or filmmaker has um, have the other duty for 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 doing mm. like uh, uh, for me, uh, all of the Southeast Asian filmmaker uh, films, uh, it should be uh, like uh, what is Southeast Asian film, our identity. Uh, whatever the influence of that, like in Indonesia, uh, we like in the middle of 90s, we our film production, national film production, stopped because the monopoly of distribution by the Hollywood movie uh, and then it starts uh, after the reformation during 1999 and 2000 until now so many young people start to to make a film by, with video and but still the and then the language of the video the films is really influenced by the narrative entertaining Hollywood movie that's but for me it's also Indonesian film so, <coughs> so uh, I'm agree that I'd, uh, in our works we don't need to to ask about the or to raise this is Indonesia or this is Singapore or this is Malaysia or like for example when the Thai filmmaker <coughs> told about the, the password things of the the, the 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 society living between the superstitious and then the modernity. I feel like, oh, he's talking about my country. <laughs> what the feeling is, what I'm feeling is, uh, that is uh, Southeast Asia. We have, we have that kind of things uh, from, from, yeah. We got, uh, there's so many modernity from the West coming and also it's influenced and it's mixed up like uh, now in here in this region. So that is Southeast Asia for me, you know, yeah. But the, the important things may be <coughs> how, uh, uh, how to make, uh, how to move the center of, of this discourse. Like f we only know like the Western as the center, c central. So we, in, like in Indonesia, for example, uh, it's cool if your film like invited to the Rotterdam Film Festival, Oberhaus Film Festival, Cannes, every, everything. But the I want to invite like uh, to the how how to move it become the center that's the question. Mm -hmm. yeah. that's what are your thoughts about that? What are some of the possibilities? The possibilities. The possibilities. Like you know, you make it now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and yeah, we in Indonesia we uh, we have uh, my organization Forum Lanteng we have a film festival. So we produce the discourse there. We invite all the people from everywhere, all over the world, and we do it like seriously. And then, uh, so uh, I I uh, I don't want to break in, but the first archipel we got the submission like 100 film, mm. two 200 film, and the second the 200, and then the third this year, there's a. 1,200 films, so from all over the world. So that's the possibility for me. Yeah. Is part of this exercise an exercise in branding as well? You know, it's like branding Southeast Asia film in a in a way that maybe will gain commercial interest. Or, or is it that kind of activity that's important? I'm not talking about the branding of Southeast Asia, but the only how to move the discourse to here. That's that's important, like to produce the knowledge, distribute the knowledge, something like that. That's because for me, it's not the the important is not the in Indonesia uh, what is Indonesia, but the the more uh, important thing is uh, uh, have we educate ourselves more and more, something like that. The education is the key word, I think. Uh -huh. Great. Thanks very much. Uh, can we move on to uh, Nick again? You know, re reacting to some of the things that were said or questions and provocations that you may have as well. Yeah, uh, listening to everyone um, and having the experience also of organizing and producing um, 
films with Southeast Asian filmmakers. Uh, we did this with the ASEAN government. Uh, I have some successes, but also some disappointments about this whole exercise. Um, I'm just beginning to see exactly how Southeast Asia is uh, not so much a label, but a, of course, a construct. You know, uh, and um, uh, politically, we can think about, uh, of course, the um, uh, the post Cold War uh, aggregation of what otherwise is a maritime aggregation of islands. Um, it has a very ancient history, and if I were to look at identity of Southeast Asia. Um, the reason why it is taking some currency is because of some shared experiences that we all have, uh, including the experience we had, all of our countries uh, had during World War II, which, you know, I mean, let's not forget, this is the 70th uh, anniversary of the end of World War II. I mean, it goes all the way back to, if you want to remember, the Majapahit era, uh, uh, empires, all the way down to the most um, catastrophic uh, traumatic experience of World War II, which is just 70 years away from, from where we are now. And yet, in the age of the digital, uh, we now you know, still continue to talk, but at this, the same time, I think what is a development here is, is critiquing the whole notion of constructing this identity. Uh, while doing that, uh, what provokes me, and I don't have immediate answers on this, this will take more researches, what is the imaginary that, that is created. Uh, who's trying to imagine Southeast Asia? Why are we going to imagine Southeast Asia? What comes out of your imaginations from other fragments last night? I, I almost couldn't sleep last night. You know, I was, you know, it was a profound experience for me. You know, what is, you know, first of all, fragments, I must congratulate the, the producers of this, that you, know, you thought about something that captures the region. It is truly fragmented, no doubt about that. I mean, there are islands. But why are we, and are you happy now? So later on, I think we need to reverse the whole question. Did you succeed exactly in trying to attain, now that you see the collective imaginary of these filmmakers? I don't know how they were selected. What was the vetting that happened? But now, the, the, the only thing that remains is the texts are there for even future generations to see exactly. So how is Southeast Asia imagined in this first AFA uh, uh, co-production project? So that, for me, is very, very problematic. Which brings me to the two points that I think we are trying to resolve, or wish to resolve, I guess, in this, in, 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 in this panel, in these two or three days that we're together. What is ASEAN and what is independent? And for me, both are relational terms. I'm, now, you know, you can talk about hybridity and all that, but my feeling is I'm, I'm coming now almost to a kind of a belief that um, ASEAN is being relational rather than looking and putting the weight of the identity within the entity itself as in a country, a nation state, even a filmmaker or a person. It is rather always in dialogue with another, which is me and some, something out there. Call it ASEAN. Therefore, it becomes very relational. Now, I would rather ponder on this whole notion of uh, relationality. And then independent is always a, rel a, a relational term for me. Uh, the first articulation of independent, let us use the Hollywood standard, it was relative to in relation to the studio system. If you are not in the big five of, of American studio system, then you were an independent. And uh, of course, we in Asia try to mimic that. I've, I've, I've finished a book on the history of cinema in the Philippines, and this is exactly how I tried to, uh, to find the origins of the word independent. And um, as I said, it's very relational, and I wish that you know, we can focus some more on this later on. But Indeed, you know, there are some very provocative notion, concepts that begin to arise here. So thank you very much. Uh, I'm, uh, we will probably get to uh, many of the things that you're, you're pointing to, but uh, of the at least three that I heard, perhaps I, uh, we, we might turn the mic now over to Karen to address <laughs> that first question. 
And I will add to that question too, right? So it, uh, we, if we are going to adopt a critical stance to uh, the construction of an uh, Asian cinema or Asian, uh, Southeast asian or whatever it is, there is a selectivity that goes on be behind that. And of course, there is a process that went on mechanically at least, perhaps politically, behind the activity of creating fragments, the film, and the archive has played a role. I add to that question, is it appropriate for an archive to commission a film that makes such a bold um, uh, 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 aspiration? Um, yeah, I kind of expected this to come up, but um, um, I suppose maybe to answer that question, uh, or, or maybe even not to answer it, but to sort of pose, um, uh, counterpose that. Um, uh, the Asian Film Archive is probably the only institution in the world, in some ways, that is not bound by a particular national um, collection. Um, and so, given that we are transnational in that way, uh, trans-Asian, um, um, we then transverse those political lines, um, and, and quite carefully, to, to some extent. Um, but we try also not to, to be bound by that, and, and yet, in order to curate our collection and to be able to program it in some way um, effectively and to be able to allow the audience to interact uh, with our collection, we, we have um, no option but to identify with the nationalities um, because that's the one way in which we could then capture um, and, and sort of process the, the collection in a way that people can relate to. Um, and like how you have already said, um, and, and the filmmakers identify that, that their works are in that, in that sense bound by that. So we in some ways are relating to the works um, and, and we are relating to how we can then define our collection uh, in a way that people can relate to. So Nick's point about that relationality, it's, it's, it's really for us three ways um, towards us as an archive and as an institution to our stakeholders and then bringing that work to an audience and then vice versa for the audience to relate to the filmmakers. Um, so I, I, I guess it's tricky, um, I would say, and I don't have the answers, but it's one way in which we're trying to bring all of these together, I mean, and that's the complexity of, of uh, an institution like that, right? Um, but turning to fragments then, um, is that I guess when we thought of the commissioning, um, one thought that came to mind was that we wanted to mark our 10th anniversary by providing, I suppose, a platform um, through the film for people to actually know, um, to get to know may perhaps the works of the filmmakers that we've of course had to select from a very large pool. Um, but it gave, um, or it was us giving ourselves and the filmmakers and our audience a chance to get to know all of these three entities in some ways. So I think people have gotten a chance to see, say, Dee's work or Kavik's work or um, now a post work in a, cons in, a, in, a, in a sort of framework that we've put out artificially to some extent. And, and that I think we, we were aware of and we did it um, with the concept that we would give the theme and allow the filmmakers to take it with them, you know, in, in their imaginations. Um, so we didn't actually, to answer that, we didn't actually give a lot of boundary. Um, we, we created just the theme and the fact that if you could work with why, what if you didn't fit uh, and play with that. Um, and hopefully that gave them enough to just try what they could within the limited time and budget and, and you know, the 15 minutes, which was our kind of um, time frame that we gave them to see what could come up and then for the audience to react to that. And hopefully in some ways for the filmmakers to react to the audience in that you as, you, as the film travels, for the, you to have that conversations and for you to bring um, the notions of fragment then uh, to in, in, in some interaction. So this really is where we were coming from. 
um, and I, I don't know if that then draws out some um, scope for the other panelists to actually comment on that interrelation between audience and filmmakers and, and an institution like AFA with the audience in some ways. I, yeah. I would really like to hear some of the uh, filmmaker's response to exactly that. How did you, uh, re how did, what did you think of that process of engaging with AFA and, and so on and so forth? But before we do that, uh, two things we have to do. One is to get Nick's uh, response. Are you satisfied with that, <laughs> <laughs> with that answer? And then later, the second thing is we have to hear from the other panelists too. At the vanguard of this articulation and definition of what is Asian, following the argument, if we were to follow the argument that uh, the notion of the ASEAN identity is a construct, then we have institutions. Uh, primarily, is this not institutional? Is this not our governments aspiring for a unified economic community labeling these countries that compose what is now an ASEAN government. They're the ones, they're at the vanguard. And let us see exactly that AFA is indeed a state institution. So the very interesting thing that is happening in Southeast Asia right now, let me relate it to film culture, it is now in fact the state that is producing independent cinema, which ironically or not, but phenomenally, it is the state now producing even films that are antagonistic even to the interest of the state or the interest of other states. So my point right now is we have come a long way. I am, I think, a veteran, you know, with my white hair now, which I'm trying to camouflage and all that. I've been, a, you know, fighting for independent cinema and I've got books and festivals to, 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 to say. I go all the way back to the 70s. I mean, maybe BPM know about uh, my little personal history, even under the dictatorship, where in the state we had adversarial relationship as independent filmmakers against military institutions, which are, of course, condoned and supported by the state. Jump 40 years after, and here we are, we even have, it is even the state, Philippines, I'm not just singling out what you're doing here, but Cinemalaya, for example, and, and uh, many of the government institutions, it's almost like they, they bake their cake and they eat it too. I mean, so what if you know, the film is about poverty porn, for example? Uh, as long as it wins in Cannes, maybe it's good for the state. Uh, okay, uh, so where are we? So it's more complex right now because of the funding institutions and we need to have a better intellectual paradigm to contain what is happening in the 21st century because things that we know in the 20th century could not serve as relics for our you know, intellectual discussion, I guess, except that you know, we need to talk about them in relation to time and history. But definitely, the 21st century is very exciting in terms of the relationship between the state and the artist. Thank you very much. And le let me give you some advice about dealing with white hair. Do what I do. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, I've got a better yeah. shape of my head. <laughs> Ishan? Um, I think Karen and um, Nick have been bringing up points which uh, were raised uh, earlier by Khan and Chumui and Sherman. So it's it's really interesting how this conversation is unfolding. And just to continue on about the no notion of institutions, um, uh, I was working at the South, uh, Singapore Art Museum on the Southeast Asian Film Festival, which every year, again, we got asked, like, why um, give it this kind of title? And I suppose what I'm going to share next will probably be a kind of practical application of many of the um, broader uh, discursive points we're bringing up. What um, Singapore has been doing all along is really kind of like what Britain was doing back when they were doing a lot of like cinema studies. Because when um, I was looking a little bit at the kind of publication history, they produce a lot of books about what they call European cinema. So I mean the commonality is there. It's like Singapore is an island, so is Britain. And then you need to find some kind of hinterland or broader continent that you can kind of appropriate and then you publish something in English, which allows you to um, sort of uh, transmit something in a way that many people can understand. And then it becomes something like what um, Oti brought up about, um, and it kind of riffed on, like making a brand. So in the end, Southeast Asia is almost like a Trojan horse. It becomes an um, uh, entity that you can use to um, produce your film program under, or you know, um, link your films to, and then it 
it gets shown at a festival at a film program in which you can raise these discussions and unpack it more and then you just sort of bring it up to shoot it down, which I think is, is kind of helpful. But it stops being helpful when we start having um, similar conversations again and a lot of angst about it. But I think that it is productive because every time we kind of work at it, we find more and more um, things to, to, to raise. So um, the whole idea of like national cinema is also very compelling because it becomes a point about what does it mean when um, a state, you know, like um, decides what a, a people are. You know, it, it sort of makes narratives of belonging and it uses that to perpetuate further sorts of notions. At the same time, it's also how people curate and program because they think that a cinema is a social text that tells you something about the country that you're from. So it's, it's really this ongoing dialogue that we all perpetuate and we're all part and we're complicit in a way. So um, it's, it's, these are just things, again, which we all don't have answers for, but um, it's, it, it just keeps coming up again and again in our conversations. But so far, it's a happy complicity. Yes, yes uh, of course. Okay. Of course. <laughs> yeah. We're all like happy in our... Okay. <laughs> There's still something productive to be had. In okay. Great. Thanks very much. These are uh, very useful perspectives, which again will inform, I'm sure, some of the questions and answers that come up <coughs> after. Uh, can we move to uh, Jen? And I, I hope you will also kind of bring in the technological elements uh, that we haven't really dwelt on very much here, other than Nick maybe mentioning digital, <laughs> right, at one point. But um, how much of that uh, also is important in this discussion? Right, yeah. M yeah, from my perspective itself, um, just speaking on, on the internet audience and just based upon the audience on our platform, 80, 18 to 35 year olds, uh, I think the notion of Southeast Asia, it's, um, it's not really present in terms of um, in terms of the first time when they were to watch something. Um, oftentimes, people don't judge or gauge it based whether it's Southeast Asian or not because everything on the internet is, I mean, it's it has basically uh, opened up all content. People people don't recognize content by its country, but they recognize content by their stories itself. Um, and very naturally, because of the stories that come out from Southeast Asia. Uh, because it's relational to people living here, um, on one aspect, um, it becomes shareable. And, and with that, um, what I see is that a lot of the, uh, the engagement and uh, how stories are traveled, it's really, really based, upon, um, based upon the topics, uh, the, the interesting uh, aspects of how the identities of uh, that the, the filmmakers have actually uh, created in their stories itself that actually uh, binds the audience with them, but right, less of actually the geographical sense of Southeast Asia in terms of films being traveling on the internet itself. Because honestly, uh, on the internet, uh, I mean, on your Facebook uh, feed itself, you're, I mean, uh, a local film is literally competing against like a European American Hong Kong uh, piece of story itself. Um, how do you actually? stand out um, and oftentimes it's less of the country which actually st stands out but rather the strength of the or uniqueness of the story itself that stands out. Can you maybe, um, for, for those in the audience who, or, or, or others who, who may not know fully the way that uh, your uh, uh, VC works, uh, can you maybe explain a little bit about what that looks like and how does it fit what you just explained? So. So for us, we, we curate uh, Asian short films, um, uh, Asian stories, and basically we stream them out. But fundamentally, uh, a lot of the first touch points to people, are people who uh, might not have been to, ever been to a film festival, they are, they are really a mass audience who are out there using, uh, using Facebook, uh, and basically scrolling their news feed, and uh, they're going to be comparing another YouTube video, um, a BuzzFeed, a night gag, and then they would discover an Asian short film itself. So that's kind of like in the world that we, uh, that in the way that we market the films, in the way we actually enable local stories to actually be discovered. So a lot of our perspective and the way we shape. Um, angles and hooks. Um, oftentimes, uh, it's purely uh, reshaped in an internet perspective of things uh, because it's it's really noisy out there. And I mean, that was actually the reason why we started Vitsi because what we realized is that uh, I mean, you have YouTube, but you have like a billion pieces of videos out there. Um, 
how as a filmmaker, um, let's say if you're a Malaysian filmmaker, how do you get, actually get your film discovered out there uh, by an audience online? It's, it's a vast opportunity, but yet at the same point of time, it's, you don't know where to start. Um, how do you build a following? Because it's a very different mechanics altogether. Um, so, so for us, it was really how, how could we uh, actually constantly engage uh, people uh, with local stories uh, on online itself. I wonder if I could press further. And uh, you know, we say a lot of things about the possibilities of a Southeast Asian cinema and all of that. And some of it is intuitive. Some is, you know, observational. Some is just wishful, right? But you have the unique opportunity through the use of technology to actually collect data about uh, audiences and how they're choosing and how they're viewing and things like that. I, 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 I would guess that you do. And if you do, uh, can you say something about what you're, what you're finding out about audiences? So w what's really interesting is that um, for us, even example in the Philippines, where, uh, which contribute to quite a significant amount of traffic uh, on our platform itself, um, a lot of the audience actually start discovering their own local stories first. Uh, but based upon that, uh, we realize that, uh, let's say, example, they, they start like, watching like, love stories. But what happens is that uh, when they actually recommended a uh, Taiwanese love story, they also do watch, do watch it. And what we realize is that topics itself um, actually uh, kind of like, enable different stories to actually be discovered uh, rather than just... It, it can first start off first with their own local stories because it's the most relational. Uh, but then after, after that, we realized that the audience is uh, very receptive, even in a totally different language. I mean, as long as there's English there, uh, that they can actually start to, to explore and discover itself. And that's kind of the interaction that we, we have. Because uh, a lot of the comments that we get is that they've not, like, let's say for a Filipino, they've not watched this Malaysian film ever anywhere. Um, and they probably haven't even watched a a feature film from Malaysia itself, and kind of the first touch point for them was really through uh, similarities in topics itself. Um, and we see that happening a lot also, I mean, vice versa in different countries, um, like for Indonesians to actually discover Malaysian films, Singapore, Singaporeans discovering uh, Thai films also. So, yeah. Thanks very much, thank you. Uh, Kong. <laughs> <laughs> cool. I didn't wake you, did I? <laughs> I'm enjoying all these people talking. <laughs> Uh, so no question like? So, oh, yeah, so uh, reflecting on know, yeah, any reactions okay. to what <laughs> have been <laughs> discussed uh, or any questions that you might want to pose? Um, I very much agree with Nick just said about Southeast Asia yeah. as a construct. Uh, <coughs> I think a nation, any nation is a construct and of course if you want to make the whole region a construct then, then it's a construct. Uh, and fame of course is a construct. So I think Cinema is is a perfect platform to to reinforce this kind of imagined community that is necessary in 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 creating certain identity. You see, when when you go to a film festival and you look at the you look at the program, you see the name of the film. In the past, you see the name of the film, and then it's slash the name of, of the director and then slash the nationality like Thailand or Indonesia or, or France or, or whatever. But now if you go to a film festival, you see the name of the film and the, na the name of the director and then when it comes to the country, you have like 10 countries, <laughs> Germany, Malaysia, <laughs> blah, 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 because of the money that, that were put together to make this film. Uh, a good example is Yesterday, in the promo clip of, of AFA, Asian Film Archive, we see a lot of Abhishat Pong, <laughs> the, the Thai filmmaker. If you, his film was shown in Cannes this year, uh, Symmetry of Splendor. And I look at the program. So, Symmetry of Splendor slash Abhishat Pong, we say the Gun, slash Malaysia, Germany, Spain, France, no Thailand. <laughs> <laughs> So I'm surprised. So is this a Thai film or this guy? I know, I know him. He makes a Thai film. The film speaks Thai, but why it is not listed as a Thai film? And 
I mean, does it even matter? Uh, I think it matters for the government when they found out later that oh, this guy is not Thai or, or what? Or what was the problem with this? So I think this is interesting because, uh, like I said before, about uh, cinema is a construct, a construct, and the country is a construct or or an imagination, a kind of collective imagination. Uh, like my friends from uh, Singapore or Malaysia or Indonesia, you talk a lot about how, uh, let's say Malaysia or Singapore is a multiracial country. Uh, you have so many languages, you have many ethnicities, you have many uh, minority groups that make up the country. But and, th and then you say Thailand speaks one language. Uh, people more or less look the same. So it's supposed to be easier. Uh, you can you can <laughs> add this later. And because cinema is illusion, uh, I think cinema, like I said before, is a perfect instrument to reinforce this illusion that that things are okay, that we are all the same, that we have a uh, an illusion of of, of unity, uh, which. In reality, it's not. That's not always the case. Uh, in Thailand, we have many languages. We have the the south, which is uh, a troubled region, but we don't have movies that speak the southern language. We don't have a mo uh, movies that speak Jawi, even though like a lot, a lot of people in Thailand speak Jawi. We don't have we don't have films that speak in the northeastern dialect, uh, even though again. Like millions of people speak northeastern dialect and not the central, uh, the central dialect. I think for many many years, cinema has been used, like I said, as an instrument to reinforce the illusion of unity, when 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 it should be used as an instrument to to champion diversity. So I think Thailand has a different problem from from Malaysia or Singapore or even the Philippines. Uh, uh, again, to go back to Abhishek Pong and, and, and his film. Uh, his new film is not going to be shown in Thailand because it has some political elements and, and, and he's not sure that it would be okay to show the film in Thailand, but that's not uh, the, the issue. The issue is for the past 10 years that Abhishek Pong has, been, has become famous, all over the world. Uh, one of the accusations that he always receives in Thailand, and maybe other filmmakers in the region have heard of this accusation as well, is that he's not making film for Thai people. His films are not Thai film because they want to please international audience, mainly European, <laughs> because it's too difficult, because it's too slow, because it, it shows Thailand or Thainess in the way that would please or that would satisfy the imagination of, of white people. Uh, so that's the accusation that he has to defend himself a lot. I think he stopped defending himself, he just doesn't care anymore. But I think people like me, like critics and industry people, we have to defend him and, and, and trying to say that, well, he tells stories that he wants to tell. He makes things the way that he wants to make. And if some people like it more than other people, then, then that's not necessarily his problem. Uh, maybe it's our problem that we're not trying a little bit harder to understand what he's trying to say. And for me, this is a big paradox. Because for me, Abhishek Pong's films are very, very, very Thai. Uh, European people, French people who love his film, well, I don't know, they understand uh, the formalism of his film. The, they understand the way he approaches cinema. But I doubt if they understand the humor. I doubt if they understand the way people react to each other, the, the way the characters react to each other. I doubt if they can, if they can understand the the history of the region that, that he tries to, to, to relate in his film. And usually he talks a lot about the Northeast, which is the region very much ignored. 
by mainstream uh, cinema. So for me, his films are very, very Thai, but at the same time, he's accused of, 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 uh, of, of exoticizing his movies in order to achieve certain impact, uh, sales or, or, or awards or whatever. So again, back to the question of identity, I think Thailand has a different problem from maybe uh, Malaysia or Singapore or the Philippines. Uh, uh, when the illusion of, of uniformity in fact breeds another deeper problem about how you see yourself in relation to the rest of the country and in relation to the rest of the world. Uh, I believe that, that, that in, in, in the 21st century, we can have more than one identity. Uh, so you are Thai, but you are also Buddhist or Muslim. You are Thai from the center of the country, or you are Thai from the south, or you are Thai from the northeast. And then again, you are part of Southeast Asia, or you are part of Asia, or you are part of the world. So there are uh, uh, these different layers that, 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 that all of this contribute to, to the way you see yourself in relation to, to, to the people around you. And for me, cinema should be the same. Uh, cinema should have that many identities, and then, uh, and then people can choose to, to, to relate to it accordingly. Well, thanks okay. very much. I mean, that's a lot to think about, and I wonder if uh, the filmmakers who have been listening to what you just said earlier uh, have a have a response uh, at all to that.